tarmac, didn't he? Change the team. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to build a wall and I'm going to make Sunderland pay for it. <clears throat> I think I'll give up on that and the hair can go as well. Uh, welcome to RedArmy.tv. Great news to talk about with me in the studio to do exactly that. Uh, on the far end, on the far, on the right wing is uh, <laughs> Robert Nichols from Fly Me To The Moon fame. Big Borough fan, just as Alan Geddes is from the refereeing fame. Go on, <laughs> go on, dare you. Oh. Yeah, no, Boo's already in the mm. studio, but never mind. Man City, fellas. Uh, Robert, I'll start with you. 1-1, one, one, nicked it at the death. Ooh, I yeah. was quite happy. I lost my voice for two days. What were you like? <laughs> it's fantastic. What a finale. It's, um, obviously, we took a, an awful lot of stick in the first half. And to concede right on half time, you, you feared for what might happen. I think I, I tweeted and said, you know, can we do it in the, in the second half? And, and we did. But it was incredible. And, and it was the, the, the sort of sea change was, was, was Negredo going for goal, wasn't it, from, yeah. from the halfway line? And... Um, Brilliant to, to score at the end. Like it just that. inspired belief at that point, yeah. didn't it? Because yeah, we were yeah. all sucking like hell because it was coming towards us. Yes. But it just didn't drop yeah. over a Cla uh, Bravo's head. But um, then everybody, the fans, it was like, we believe. Yeah, absolutely. We, I think we started to believe, didn't we? Because of what we did at Arsenal. And we look at all the results over the, over the weekend and everyone that played in Europe struggled. It, it, and, and that seems to be the way this season. And, you know, we, we put... Three, three great results together there and um, we, we don't need to fear people now. We've really found our feet in the Premier League and that, that's what it says and um, uh, looking forward to playing at home now and it, it's a great way to go into an international break, isn't it? You're mm. Fantastic. Geds, what was it like for you? I, I think it's just, it's nice uh, just to, for us to score in the last minute of a game or <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Because normally it's, we're on the other end no, of I it. I was at Burnley last so, year. So, yeah, so yeah. you know, just to, just to actually to score at, at that time and yeah because look it's devastating isn't it as a team and as mm. a fan as well when it happens to you so from that point of view I just think that yeah it was great to score the goal get the point come away and you're right I think three great results we can only build on it can't we you yeah. know what I mean I know we've got Chelsea next but look that there's something to look forward to because yeah. why not we've, we've drew with Arsenal we've drew with uh, with Man City, so why can't we go and draw minimum or even yeah. beat Chelsea? Who knows? I'd be quite happy with the first, second victory. I almost forgot about Bournemouth going yeah. against Chelsea. That would be nice. But Robert mentioned the international break. Has it now come at a wrong time for the Borough? I think it probably it probably has. You know, it, we were on a little bit of a roll, a little bit of momentum, and you know, I think if you look back as well, we in the past sort of season and a half that, that we. We either didn't seem to do well just before the international yeah. break, and then when we come back, we don't sort of seem to do well. We, we have to do a couple of games to kickstart ourselves again. So, you know, hopefully we don't fall back into that trap again, and we can we can you know move on from where we sort of we are at the moment. Mm. That's what I'm hoping. Robert, we're going to take the mick out of Ian Wright a bit later. Obviously, really? right, 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 wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. Uh, but I've got to be honest. I thought we were terrible in the first 45 minutes, and we were a different team when we came out for the second half. Is that down to uh, Idol's pep talk? Pep talk? Ooh. Pep. Like what you said there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. good. Uh, For those who didn't get it, Pep Guardiola <laughs> is the manager of Man City. Uh, <laughs> Idol to take the credit? He must do. We did. We, we, we had a different sort of intent in the second half. We pushed players further forward. Uh, Darun had come in, hadn't he? He'd been the change for, for, for Gaston Ramirez being suspended. And he was incredibly deep. Not blaming it all on him, but he was really, really deep in, in in that first half. We just couldn't get out of our box, and we were just blasting the ball. And the Man City fans were were were, were uh, jeering Middlesbrough. <laughs> and I, I was behind somebody in, in, a, in a queue in a shop over the road for, after the match, and he, I could hear him he was talking on his mobile to to his friend and saying that was the worst team we've ever played in the Premier League. You think, no, you've got it wrong completely. But it was a fantastic change of emphasis in the second half. It's great to show that people said that there was. There was no plan B with it, like the Okoranko. Well, there certainly was there. Yeah, how much credit should he take for that, Al? Well, I, I think it's one of those things that you, you look at it as a game and, and, you know, we all talk as football fans and, and, it, and it was as if we went out and sort of, and Karanka said, right, sit deep, 10 men behind, 11 men behind the ball, let them get tired and then we'll pounce on them in the second half with some pace and, and, and get something out of the game. Mm. The reality was, yeah, we, we know now afterwards with the chat that's come out that that, that wasn't the plan. 
we, we, you know, we were sat far too deep, uh, and he, he sort of he's corrected that at half time, and we were a different team. It was yeah. like you know, you hear it regularly on Match of the Day and on the likes of the TV pros when they say that it was like a different side coming out the second half. Well, it, it really was mm. like a full eleven change in coming out with different players, different team, different you know, not a different formation, obviously, but different um, demographics, mm. I mean, and, and it mm. and it worked, you know, to the extent that we. I thought we had the lion's share of the of the possession in the second half of the game. Better chances, definitely. Yeah, without yeah. a towel. Yeah, uh, I, there's nothing worse than a sore loser, is there, Hillary Clinton? Um, but, <laughs> no, nah, she was all right. Um, but Pep Guardiola had a whinge, didn't he? Uh, what was the interview he did on TV afterwards? How can you counter-attack against a team <laughs> that doesn't attack? Sore loser? Well, I know it was a draw, but he lost two points at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, Barcelona... <laughs> Couldn't do what Borough did. <laughs> Does that mean we're better than Barca? Could be. Ah, I'll have it. I'll we, had have the, it. we had the Barca keeper, didn't we? We did, we did. But it's, it, it's not nice. He was, he was well hacked off, wasn't he, Pep? I, I, because I, I think what's happened is, is Pep Guardiola's come over to England and if, if you look at his track record in the past, it, wherever he's been, he's been in leagues where there's been two teams in the league. Mm. It's literally been a two-horse race. And I think he came over probably in, you know, with, with the, th- the thought process of, look, I can come and do exactly mm. what I've just done in Spain and, uh, um, and over in, in, in Germany as well. Mm. But the reality of it is, it's, this is a six, seven, eight, it's an eight horse race this season in the Premier League mm. for me. And I think he's really finding it hard because, you, you know, we all know we've, we've been watching the Premier League since its, its, its start and any team can beat any team on the day and, and that's the reality of the Premier League you know if you put the work effort in and you know and you, and you go with a game plan and you stick to your game plan then you can come out with a result it can happen and I think we got uh, I think he, we got the rough end of the stick because I think this was frustration that was building yeah. because he did say it's the third game now that teams have come back and uh, come and parked the bus unquote but anyway I don't care we got a point it was fantastic uh, and you think it was fantastic too let's have a look at some of the tweets Chris Harper every every single one of you players fans and manager applause get in Jeff Winder the Jeff Winder hello Jeff uh, so proud of Borough today showed fighting spirit and against a world-class side deserved their point UTFB what does that F mean Jeff um, Stuart Whittingham absolutely <laughs> buzzing with my club outstanding uh, team effort Valdez showing why he's a World Cup winning keeper uh, pointed City, thank you, we'll take that all day long. And Borough Brick Road, Darun is on fire. Yeah, we were chanting that. Cracking point at City, superb second half performance. Well done, Borough. Valdez, different keeper now to what we saw at the yeah, start yeah. of the season. Absolutely. For me, it was, um, uh, it was a start of the second half against Arsenal and he came wandering off his line and he missed it and it was, it, it was a, a real let off. It was cleared off the line. And it was almost like he sort of... Uh, he said, enough's enough. And from that moment, he did, he did a brilliant save uh, with a really strong left hand. And then he started coming for, 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 for the ball with those massive gloves <laughs> and just plucking the ball out of the air. And, and, he, and he suddenly, uh, and that's, there's the confidence now that's, that's filtered right the way through the team, knowing that, that, that you've got a goalkeeper that's, uh, that's dominating, because he wasn't before. And um, against, um, against Man City, he was quite superb in, this, in the first half. He was, it was, it was, you, you had the sort of feeling that they weren't going to beat him. And, and, and that's something when, you, when you've got the uh, players of the, sort of, of the guile of Manchester City. Yeah. So that's what we bought him for, wasn't it? And um, there's been a sort of, people have, have been talking about anyone can go and go for Barcelona. That's rubbish, isn't it? Really, it actually. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he'd be, he was goalkeeper at Barcelona for years. And we'd seen what, a but class it does act help when you've got the likes of Busquets yeah. and things like that in front of him. Yeah, but yeah, you're but, right. But he, he he did used to come for the ball, but it's it's taken him. Even though he's been at Man United, it still seems to have taken him a while to to adjust. And and I think uh, all credit to Aitor again because I I I, I thought it was a, a massive mistake. I must admit, we're going to lose a lot of points. And he he did he, he unsettled everybody. But now it's. Uh, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal because we have now got like a, 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 a world-class keeper. Yeah. I've got to take my hat off, by the way. Uh, make <laughs> Borough great again. wonder where I got that idea from. Um, <laughs> to, to Valdez, because he has been performing really well. And I take my hat off to all the, the back line uh, that played at City. Um, but I was surprised to see the echo not giving Valdez man of the match at City. He gave it to Callum Chambers instead. I was surprised with you, Al. I, I think, I, I, look, I'm, I'm 
I'll just speak the, my mind and tell Good. the truth. That's what you know what I mean? It's like with Valdez, I'm still, you know, I'm still like that about him. Yes, he is a first class keeper. And I can imagine someone like the likes of Valdez coming into the dressing room at the beginning of the season. You know, people will have stood up there and went, you know, wow, we've got a fantastic goalkeeper. I think the problem at the beginning, you're dead right, is that I played as a goalkeeper before, you know, not at any level like that. But when you've got four people in front of you who can trust you, and I think Rob said it there, is that mm. they automatically will sw they'll do their job. But I think what was happening in those first few games is that the defenders were worrying because of the, yeah. the fact that Valdez was there and they knew that he was there for mishaps. But at the same time, I've also seen the size of Big Leo, the goalkeeper coach, and to be fair, I think he's probably had <laughs> something to do with the fact that he's probably got a little bit better quickly because I wouldn't like to face him when he got angry. <laughs> he looks a very, very angry man. Leo. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Passion. I love uh, the idea that Victor Valdez, yeah. who's won the World Cup, the European Championships, all this kind of stuff, has to come to Borough to get better. Love it. <laughs> um, right, enough for us for the moment on the game. Uh, let's get the thoughts of Joe Nicholson with his review of the City match. So, Borough continue their good run of form after Martin Daroon's late header earns them a one all draw away at the Etihad. It was a game which played out very similar to the one which Borough played away at Arsenal a couple of weeks ago. Aito Okaranka went back to playing three central midfielders with Forshaw, Clayton and Daroon. And the job really in the first half was to get men behind the ball and keep Manchester City out. However, as good as the defending was from Borough in the first half, they really did lack a threat going forward. Adama Traore was kept out of the game and Burrow were unable to use his pace on the counter-attack and they reverted to kind of hoofing long balls forward to Alvaro Negredo who was very isolated up front and the distribution from the back was quite poor. But Burrow defended well in that first half. A couple of great saves as well from Victor Valdez who put in arguably his best performance of the season. But on 43 minutes, a bit of quality from Kevin De Bruyne when he picked the ball up outside the area and he whipped a great ball into the penalty area, which was turned in by Sergio Aguero to make it 1-0. But Borough were a lot better after half-time. They managed to get men forward to support Negredo. Adam Forshaw had a shot early in the second half, which was saved by, by Claudio Bravo. But Manchester City had chances to put the game to bed in the second half, most notably through Aguero, who missed a decent chance after the break. But Borough kept going, kept working and battling, and they managed to nick a late equaliser when George Friends crossed was headed home by Martin Darun. A great result, and hopefully they can continue their momentum after the international break. Thanks, Joe. His thoughts on uh, the 1-1 draw at Man City. Fellas, what I loved about City, and I'm absolutely perplexed, uh, before the game, as we were keeping warm downstairs, drinking bottle and other drinks, uh, Janino songs. He wears a magic hat. <laughs> he is magic. Uh, then people were sticking... Have a look at this. This was... My take of, as I was walking down the steps, coming out of the Etihad, pictures of that famous Janino, Philip Albert photograph, but adhesive ones that were stuck all over the Etihad, the borough section on TV screens, uh, where they serve the Bovril and the drinks, uh, on walls, as we've just seen. Have I missed something here? Is it, an, <laughs> is it a Janino anniversary? Why, why are we suddenly Janinoing? Uh, any idea? No. Is he coming back for a fourth time, <laughs> maybe, or something? No. Well, he has to you know polish the boots pretty well, <laughs> won't he? Because they're pretty mouldy by now. But yeah, it was it was bizarre. But it, it's good to see. I mean, it, maybe it was alcohol fueled. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, people were singing the Genie Union song as mm. we were queuing up to get in, and then they were singing it inside. Uh, it's nice to see people having fun, though, isn't it? Forget, forget why it was Genie. I've got no idea. Write in, yeah. email, text, tweet, whatever you want to do. Tell us why. But um, it's good to see them having a bit of bit of a, a crack and a and a bounce about. So much so, thanks to at Cragsy, he sent us the video. Have a look at what was going on. Always puts a smile on my face thinking about the little fella because he was pretty good. I taught him everything he knew, not. Uh, Ian Wright, did you watch Match of the Day? Did I? What, well, look, did, we, we, it, we're we all football watch, fans, everybody watches Match of the Day. It's a bit like this it show, is. when the Borough get beat, when they've not played well, our viewing figures go down. When we play well, yeah. they fly up. Is it like the same with Fly Me? Yeah. Is it? Right, okay then. Well, I thought it was just me. <laughs> uh, Ian Wright, have a look at this. 
This is what he said. We've condensed it down to make it easier for you. These were his thoughts on the Borough game. Four times he used the word terrible. Uh, but they were terrible in the first half, Middlesbrough. They were terrible in the first half going forward. They were terrible in the first half. They had to chase it, but they were terrible in the first half. <sighs> Thanks, Ian. Uh, just a quick thought. Do you agree with him? Were we that bad in the first half? We, we were bad uh, in terms of the fact that we sat back and defended, but I don't, you know... Uh, the, what they did though on match of the day which I didn't like was they showed you the four clips of four balls that just got knocked up anywhere you know what I mean and that wasn't the case you know what I mean but they tried to make it as if the, all we done was it was like schoolboy football the ball came into the defence and we just doofed it up the other end and just got rid of it uh, but then they were back under pressure again so I don't think we were as bad as terrible we defended we were, well we frustrated yeah, them exactly and that, and that, were we, and were we worthy of four times terrible from the mouth no. of right wrong no totally wrong right wrong, is wrong 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 Right yeah. is wrong. Uh, so what we'll do on the subject of wrong, 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 have a look at this. We've uh, delved into the thesaurus of Teesside yeah. because we're going to try and help Mr. Wright in his broadcasting career. Yeah. So we thought, you know, give him a bit more vocab. Yeah. So here's some Teesside vocab to suggest to Mr. Wrong, Wrong, Wright. Uh, he could have said, they were naff in the first half, Middlesbrough. They were pap in the first half going forward. They were cack in the first half. <laughs> and they had to chase it, but they were crud in the first mm. half. So hope that helps, Ian. Uh, if you want a bit more coaching, just give us a shout here <laughs> at redarmy.tv. Uh, so much so, we'd like your thoughts on Mr. Wright and his gigs. Because he did wear those rather strange red yeah. spectacles, didn't he? His Arsenal gigs. Uh, so a quick poll going online now. Get on and vote. Uh, Ian Wright... His gags. What does Ian Terrible write look like in his Arsenal glasses? Your three choices of an answer. Terrible, terrible, or yes, you've guessed it, terrible. And I think <laughs> terrible's winning. So that's righty. Enough of City. We've got a few more things to talk about. England call-ups, that didn't happen, stuff like that. But we'll do that immediately after the news. Here's the Borough News, latest goings-on in and around the Riverside with Laurie Cox. We start Red Army News with special congratulations to Aitor Karanka as he's celebrating three years in charge of Middlesbrough. He took over November the 13th, 2013 and his first game was an away defeat at the hands of Leeds. However, since then he's taken charge of over 150 games with an almost 50% success rate. While we're handing out congratulations, it's also a pat on the back for Gaston Ramirez. He won the competition for BBC Match of the Day's Goal of the Month after his strike against Bournemouth. This follows after Carlin awarded Christian Stuani Goal of the Month for August. And finally, the Premier League has issued guidelines which mean that away fans must be seated next to the pitch. Chairman Richard Scudamore said the decision has been made to try and increase the atmosphere at grounds. This, however, will not affect Borough as the fans already sit pitch side. Don't forget, if you do have any news at all, you can contact us here at Red Army TV at studio at redarmy.tv or on social media at Borough Red Army. Thanks, Laurie. The, uh, the news, of course, building up to, uh, towards the City game and maybe after because they played, again, they played well. Gibbo and Forshaw, should, have they, should they have been part of Southgate's uh, England squad? Some interesting thoughts from the fans via tweets, but Robert, what do you think? Uh, has Gibbo done well enough? Has Forshaw knocked on the door of late to have deserved a call-up against uh, Scotland and Spain? Yeah, it would have been a reward for the, the phenomenal... Obviously, Darun got injured in that first game and Forshaw came in and sees his, his uh, chance and he's looked superb. And um, against, against Bournemouth, he, he totally overshadowed Wiltshire, which is, which is interesting con uh, if you look at the England squad. And Ben Gibson has really s stepped up, hasn't he? he? He looks a Premier player and he's, he, he's leading the defence now. So, yes, the, the, the two of them, I was disappointed for them not to get the call-up. But let's, let's hope it still happens because the, 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 they deserve it. Mm. We did do a poll, run a poll, um, to yeah. see whether the guys deserved their call-up. Um, and the fans basically said, Gibbo, yes. Uh, for Sean, his own, maybe not. There was, there was half a decent chunk of votes mm. for the pair of them. Um, and some 16% of honest people who said, no, they're not ready for it yet, just, mm. just quite yet. Would you go along with that? Should, should Gibbo uh, have been in the England squad? I, th I think the problem is at the moment, or it just seems to come across, is that, that, that players these days, uh, I remember as a, as a young boy, you'd you know, stand on the terraces at Essen Park and watching the likes of Millsy and people like that and, and, and Spike Armstrong and looking and saying, you know, if he carries on playing like this, yeah. he's going to get a call-up with the next England call-up. 
it doesn't seem to go on for him anymore now for some reason I don't know but yeah I, I you know I agree I think Gibson Gibson will definitely play for England one day and I believe that Gibson will captain England in the long term mm. I really do I, I think he I think he's got the the, the credentials I heard him talk after the Bournemouth game uh, he came in uh, we were there with doing some hospitality he came in he's very articulate yeah. he's very well spoken um, and he comes across very well and, and you know I think he did deserve it he's done you know he's, he's I asked the question to my friends and said look is he better than Chris Small? Is he as, as good as Chris Small, or is he worse than Chris Small? And, and you know, you would say he's as good as, if not better than mm. Chris Small. And so on that alone, why not deserve? Why why doesn't he deserve his call, England call up? You know, he should have been in for it, me. Interesting thoughts from the fans coming in via posts and tweets. Uh, when asked that question, mm. uh, who deserves to be called up out of the two of them, or even the pair of them, uh, Alan Hunton, none. No longer an honour to play. Best stay at home and train under Ito. Uh, Paddy Baller. Uh, honestly, I'd rather not get them called up. Yeah, it's great recognition, but it never benefits the club in short. And uh, Alan Hunton, none. Uh, it's definitely... Oh, I've just done Alan Hunton. Sorry, I've put you on twice, mate. Uh, ben Gibson, though, interestingly. Yeah, the Ben right. Gibson. Uh, never mentioned England. He just said, hey, never write us off. Uh, it was great fight and desire to stay in the game at City. We got what we deserved in the end. So we had to mention Ben while we were talking about yeah. it. So, uh, yeah, interestingly, the fans, yeah, forget England. Just concentrate on the Borough. <laughs> we'll do a Leicester. Uh, let's move on. Fans again g getting a bit of praise. And it, again, it comes in through tweets and posts. And 12th man uh, has tweeted, Borough fans, a different class, never give up. Always believing it was a great point. And uh, Alan Hunton, who we've mentioned a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> brilliant how Borough fans get such compliment reviews by other teams' fans. Noisy again. Yeah. Uh, was it 3,000? Uh, we had 3,000 in the city. But it did sound as though there was only one set of fans singing at one point. Yeah, yeah, it did, definitely. Um, that's often the case, isn't it, where the away fans make, make, the, make the noise. Um, but um, we've, we've certainly made our mark in the Premier League, home and away, because we've made a lot of noise at home. So um, we're enjoying ourselves now. We've, we've, we've found our feet in the Premier League in these last three games. I think some of the tension has gone. And uh, we... We, we, we're there to get results, not just as tourists. Mm. I felt when we went to Arsenal, there was a few people there looking around the stadium and think, oh, this is great. But no, we're here. We're not here just to sort of enjoy the view. We're, we're here to get results as well. And we're here to stay. As we found out with Juninho's Got a Magic Hat. Yeah. Uh, Al, is it, uh, you know, we talked about Leo and the pride. It, it, it is quite a proud thing, isn't it, to have all these other clubs saying how great the Middlesbrough fans are? I think it's something that's, that comes from the, it's the people of Teesside and Middlesbrough. You know, we 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 love to have a great time. We love we love our club. We want to go and we're not just going to support our team. We're going to have a great time as well. And I think, you know, you, you've saw it over the past two or three seasons, definitely that that the away games now it's it's a it's a day out. It's a trip. It's it's not just to go and watch a match. It's actually you know it's a group of guys. You're meeting up with the same people. You're seeing the same faces yeah. and. And you know, it really, really is. It, 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 it's 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 like family, I suppose. Is probably the best way to describe it. It's like fam you know, you're seeing the same friends, but it's all about the support and passion, and and it does come across. And there's nothing better, you know, whether you're listening, if you're got, getting a snippet on the radio or on the TV, and you hear the crowd singing, mm. you can, and it does. It it, it takes over stadiums, which yeah. is fantastic for Borough. And, and again, it's just putting us on the map, which is what we want. So and great, great time to come up to go up when this when it's thirty pound. To get into away games. Also, a great time to come up when you're guaranteed. What is it, 120 million or something? Yeah. yeah. Whatever the new deal is. Well, it's great for away fans that yeah, we yeah. can go to those match and we can afford it. Yeah. Because we would have been facing maybe 60 quid to go to, to Chelsea, for instance. And I yeah. don't know how much. And Arsenal. Arsenal's yeah. always expensive. Yes. Uh, I think Idol's mentioned the fans as well. And let's touch on Ito before we finish because it's his third anniversary, his leather anniversary. Let's have a look <laughs> at the stats. Here's Ito's third uh, leather anniversary, third year stats. Uh, 151 games since he joined the Borough. I think it's this weekend. It's Sunday when it's his, his anniversary. 75 of those games have been won. Mm. Uh, 37 draws, 39 losses. It's a win ratio, Robert, of 49 points. Just a shade under 50%. That's Super. actually decent numbers, isn't it? Yeah, really, really good. Absolutely. And obviously achieved what, what no one could do. Seven years down in the Championship and, and he got us out of that. And so um, it's, that's, that's a tremendous start and uh, he's delivered, certainly delivered, hasn't he, for, yeah. for, for us all. Without and, uh, Just before I get Alan's thoughts, uh, to the backroom staff, we need a cake, birthday cake, can we have a birthday cake, please? Um, so that'll be brought in. But Al, your thoughts tonight on the job he's done in the three years? Look, we, we've, we've all went on this uh, journey with him over the past three seasons, three years since he's been here, and yeah, we, we've all had our thoughts and views about him at certain times. 
no, the, the walkout, etc., and things like that. And I think people had their own thoughts and views about that and, and, and why it happened and what happened. But as Rob said quite rightly, look, he came and he said, look, this is it. I'm going to get promotion and I'm going to do it. And he's done it and delivered. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you can only say to him, well, well done. And, and, you know, that really did surprise me there. That, that, that percentage, 50%, I think that is mm-hmm. fantastic. It is. Because any, any club in the Premier League would take on a manager mm-hmm. of, that, of that sort of um, stature with a 50% win rate. Without, without a doubt, he's not. He's not. <laughs> Here um, we come. <laughs> Sorry. Fantastic. There, there we go. Especially for Aito. Look at this. We'll throw it. There you go. <laughs> Happy anniversary. I don't know which one we can use. We'll try that one. Happy anniversary, Ito. <sighs> Three years. We'll, we'll cut that at the end. All right. But um, great job. He's been getting a bit of flack about his one man up front. And I've mm. look, I've been guilty of that, but I've got to take my Donald Trump hat off because <laughs> I'm going to make Borough great again. Um, <laughs> can't do a Yankee impression. Um, Dead right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, yeah, stop being brutally honest. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been critical with his formation, but he has done a fantastic mm. job. So uh, thumbs up to Ito. We're going to enjoy your anniversary cake. If you want some, mate, come on in. Get it. We'll serve it up for you. Uh, quick congratulations, of course, Gaston. Goal of the month. Deserved? Brilliant goal. It what, was, was it better than John Hendry's against Millwall? That was a fantastic. Uh, that was a, a run and a half, wasn't it? Mm. I think H cut inside and did a did a few players. Though, yeah, yeah, he? and pl- and and it was against arguably better opposition, obviously yeah. Bournemouth. But you heard, you heard the crowd though, didn't you? It was like when when he went down the wing, it was fantastic. But when he cut in mm. onto that right foot, the whole of the sort of crowd just like went oh, as it would go like <laughs> no, he just done too much. But then the finish was sublime. His left foot just beautiful and deserved thoroughly do you know what I mean Ro- thoroughly deserved um, and that's two we've had now isn't it yeah if I'm right, right. Yeah. Stoani and, uh, and well, now Ramirez yeah, yeah, yeah. two no, goal of the months fantastic so uh, 30% uh, and well done to all the Borough fans for getting on there and doing what they have to do for match of the day two uh, to give him that award 30% uh, of votes for Gaston uh, that's it fellas uh, we've chewed the cud massively uh, unfortunately there's no football to talk about next week it's uh, international break so we can all go on holiday line a beach <laughs> spin and drink sangria is that what we're going to do yeah absolutely <laughs> Al, Robert, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, you. Hopefully uh, you'll be in over you know, the course of the next few weeks. I'd like to see you both in again, uh, up the borough and all that. And by the way, don't forget, I'm going to make borough great again. See you. Come on, lads, believe. Come on.